You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. Daniels, play action, throws, catch made by Neighbors at the five, and he will carry a Panther into the end zone. Touchdown, Fighting Tigers. I mean, uh, without them, I wouldn't be able to do nothing like this, you know, be able to, for them to catch the ball and be explosive after the catch, you know, uh, that's, not, that's something that too many people don't have in the country. So uh, just a relationship and the bond that we have on and off the field, you know, it just translates to Saturdays. Chris Blair on the call, LSU Sports Radio Network. That was Malik Neighbors' first touchdown of the night. And, of course, Jaden Daniels uh, after the game talking about this incredible incredible group of wide receivers. In case if you missed it today, uh, both Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. have been named semifinalists for the Boletnikoff Award. That should really come as no surprise as Malik Neighbors continues to lead the nation in receiving yardage and Brian Thomas Jr. continues to lead the nation in receiving touchdowns. I mean, these two... I. It's uh, the superlatives are incredible, and I know we keep saying the same thing, but it's like when you when you start comparing these two to Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson and the season they had as a tandem in 2019, and realize that Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors are actually outpacing them through 11 games. I mean, just say that out loud. I, I mean, I'm the guy who sat here and said, like, we're never going to see. Another people ask, so when you, could he be the next Burrow? Could, no, like, and I've always said, no. Like, understand, you got to watch the greatest offense in the history of college football, and you're never going to see it again. And here we are, four years later, and you're seeing players on this offense outpacing in certain aspects what that team did. It's just, I mean, of course, that team had a, you know, a number three in Terrace Marshall who was a five star, but Kyron Lacey on this team as a number three has just been spectacular. Um, Boy, they are just um they're loaded. And and not only was um Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas, not only were they on uh on Monday announced as semifinalists for the Blitnikoff, uh, Mike Denbrock was also uh, announced as a semifinalist for the Broyles Award given to the nation's top assistant coach. We've seen a couple of LSU assistants in the past win this. John Chavis won it back in twenty eleven, and of course Joe Brady won it in twenty nineteen. And I'm going to stump for this. Is I know every I, I know this is less appealing, I think, than uh, obviously than the player awards, as everyone's focused primarily on the Heisman Trophy and then Malik with the Blitnikoff. But Mike Denbrock is is worthy. When you look at the transformation that LSU's offense has gone through from you know 2021 in the last year and then through this year, you know, Denbrock is the one who is. And Brian Kelly talked about it last week. It's a collective effort of all the coaching staff, but that's the guy calling the plays, scheming on game day, dialing up the right plays, and he deserves a tremendous amount of credit. The same way that Steve Ensminger deserved credit in 2019, but because you have a couple of understated coaches that aren't screaming for the spotlight, they often don't get it. So whether they, they may not want it, I'm going to push. Like, it's like I push Steve Ensminger into the spotlight in 2019. I'm going to do the same for Mike Denbrock because he he deserves the credit and the accolades. He deserves to win the Broyles Award as well. So... Um, some of those national award lists are are coming out and being updated. So we'll let you know as the finalists are announced and ultimately how it goes with the College Football Award Show coming up here in a couple of weeks. All right, it's after further review. Our Monday shows are brought to you by Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. Energy efficient replacement windows, beautiful entry doors, hardy plank and vinyl siding. You know Relief Windows. They do it all. You can always check out the showroom right there on Airline Highway in Prairieville, Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. So, um, let me just go through some of my notes from the game itself on Saturday, whereas I, I understand you you're LSU, you go beat Georgia State 56-14, to and there's not going to be a ton to say about the game as a whole. But a couple of things that actually really went LSU's way. It was interesting that Georgia State elected to, to receive the kickoff because what, what their objective was that Georgia State won the toss and were like, we want the ball. And their thought was, let's go score because we can score on that defense, and then let's muddy up the game and slow it down. And they really did a great job of that for the bulk of the first half. They got the ball, went right down the field and scored. LSU got the ball, got the equalizer. LSU actually got a stop and returned a punt. <laughs> 20, Javen Nicholas returned a punt 27 yards. So LSU had basically half a field, and they embarked on a nine-play, 53-yard drive that took up you know, four minutes, and this was nasty. Um, you had a holding penalty on the first play. You had uh, a penalty flag for 
um, ineligible man downfield that was reviewed and ultimately picked up. You had Mason Taylor drop a screen pass. Jaden Daniels in one of his only bad throws of the night. Overthrew Aaron Anderson in the end zone. Mason Taylor caught a ball on third and 10. Fumbled Mason it. Mason Taylor! Fumbled it, but was fortunate enough to get on it for the first down. Then you had another review on the neighbor's screen for 12 yards where they had an eligible man downfield on, uh, on Taylor that they ultimately uh, picked up the flag. On the next play was when Brian Thomas fumbled and... and after that, it was second and goal from the 14, and Jaden was like, you know what, I'll just take care of it. He ran it in. By the way, go back and watch the Brian Thomas fumble. They were going to throw a pass to Jaden Daniels. Go back and watch the play. Brian Thomas was on the right side. Malik Neighbors was on the left. Thomas was coming in motion behind Daniels. Daniels hands to Thomas. Thomas was going to hand to Neighbors, because if you go watch it, Jaden had emptied out to the right side. He was running a route. So they were going to try to get Malik Neighbors throwing a touchdown pass to Jaden Daniels, so then Jaden would have rushing, receiving, uh, rushing, passing, and receiving touchdowns. But Brian Thomas couldn't hold on to it, and then Jaden just ran it in on the next play. They were they were trying. They pulled out clearly all the stops there for Jaden. Um, so look, LSU was up, and then man, you give up another touchdown, and you're in a tie ball game into the second quarter. And by the way, you had two possessions in the first quarter, and only two possessions. Um, uh, uh, well, you had one possession deep into the second quarter when Kyron Lacey scored, so you're up 21-14. You get the ball. There's 236 to play in the first half. Two, like This is how, how good Georgia State executed their game plan. 236 to play in the first half. LSU had the ball three times. Three times. And then they threw a 70-yard touchdown to Brian Thomas on the first play. <laughs> I mean, that's just what this offense is, man. Tigers got a, sc- a stop with score again before the end of the first half to go up 35-14. That was pretty much all she wrote. Mac Markway got a touchdown pass, um, his first touchdown reception of his career on the first possession of the third quarter. Tigers would, would pile on a bit there. Um, one thing that I know has been brought up a bit that, um, uh, that people have thought is, it, it's been a bit contentious, was Jaden continuing to play. Now, when they scored on the second possession of the second half, by the way, LSU only had three possessions in the second half total. Like, it was incredible. You had eight possessions in the entire ballgame. And you scored on them all, and then you ran out the clock on the final one. But it was was pretty incredible how Georgia State actually did a good job of executing what they wanted to, but LSU's defense started to get stops. But I know when LSU went up 49-14, to the thought really was at that point, okay, Jaden's night is over, and they put him back in. To stat pad. And I want to be very, very clear about this. I am totally one million percent okay with sending Jaden back out there to stat pad. And I'll and I'll explain. Let me let me give you an example from a different sport to help paint this picture. Do you remember the name Armando Galarraga? S- some of you will. That's probably lost on a lot of you, but when I tell you the story, you'll remember it. Back in 2010, Armando Galarraga, who was a... Look, he pitched in the big leagues, but was just an okay pitcher. Never really became a consistent piece of any rotation, but in 2010, Armando Galarraga threw what should have been Major League Baseball's 21st perfect game. He had recorded 26 outs, and then with two outs in the ninth, he induces a ground ball, he runs to cover first base, and Jim Joyce, who was the first base umpire, missed the call at first. He ruled the runner safe. There was no review at the time in Major League Baseball. And so Galarraga lost the perfect game on a blown call by Jim Joyce. As I say that, you a lot of you probably remember the story now. But you don't remember Armando Galarraga. And history will not remember Armando Galarraga because Armando Galarraga did not throw a perfect game. He, would ha- he should have been the 21st player in the history of the game of baseball to throw a perfect game. That's immortality. And it was lost because Jim Joyce missed a call. Now, baseball should have done the right thing and retroactively gone and awarded him the perfect game, but whatever. My point is, 10 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, when we're all dead and gone, Heisman Trophy winners are immortal. As they say every year when they award the trophy, the winner will forever be known as Heisman Trophy winner. And that's true. Opening doors and opportunities literally for the rest of your life and for all time. The Heisman Trophy is the most famous individual award 
in sports. And when you are a Heisman Trophy winner, that is forever. And if I go back and look at Troy Smith's stats in 2006, he won it over Darren McFadden that year. Do I know what Troy Smith did in the non-conference games? No. Don't really care. You want to go back and look at the late Rashawn Salam in 1994? Probably not. Are we pouring over stats from Herschel Walker when he won the Heisman? Nah. All we know is he won the Heisman. And that's all history is going to remember as well. Most of America was not watching LSU and Georgia State. Let's just be real. I mean, you had Washington, Oregon State going on. You had a really competitive ending with Florida and Missouri, which was interesting. There was a lot going on. The nation wasn't watching this game. So most of the college football-loving world saw highlights and the final stat line. Wait, Daniels did what? The collective world, as, as close as we are in the bubble, wasn't paying attention to that game. And in the future, no one's going to look back and say, yeah, well, buddy got some stats late in the game against Georgia State. They're just going to know that Jaden Daniels did something that only in the SEC, in the history of the SEC, that Johnny Manziel has done. He's thrown for 3,500 yards and run for 1,000. No one's going to mention anything about the late touchdown pass in league neighbors against Georgia State. So if you have an opportunity to build that case, damn it, go build it. Because the worst thing that could possibly happen, the worst thing with respect to this whole conversation, is you're sitting there on that second Saturday in December, and Bo Nix wins the Heisman, and if you're Brian Kelly or Jaden Daniels, you think, man, we could have done more. That's why LSU needs to be a propaganda machine. Cody Worsham and all of the, the LSU Twitter accounts, and everything, pull, yes, keep firehosing everything you got to tell your story. A hundred, tell this kid's story of why he deserves it. Not only for him, of course, for him because he's worthy and you have to influence the people that are going to vote, but it's, it's immortality for him, but it's also a payoff for the LSU program. To have another quarterback win the Heisman Trophy. My God, you could sell that in recruiting. When recruits come in and you can say, we got two quarterbacks win the Heisman since 2019. You don't think Oklahoma under Lincoln Riley was selling that when he had back-to-back -back winners? With Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray? And he had Jalen Hurts as a finalist? And then Caleb Williams wins it? Like You don't think he's selling that? Of course he is. This is an opportunity... For Brian Kelly to sell it too. Hey, come to LSU. Look at the receivers you're going to play with. You can win a Heisman Trophy. It's not made up. It's not, hey, come try to be a Heisman Trophy winner. LSU hasn't had a Heisman Trophy winner in 60 years. Come try to win one. Joe Burrow, check that box. And now if Jaden Daniels does it again, that's, that's an incredible feather in the cap that LSU can use in recruiting. So yes, my God. If you have the opportunity Saturday against Texas A&M, if you're up 35, keep running him out there. Because, like, Jaden saving Jaden Daniels for the Relia Quest Bowl ain't a thing. And if Jaden's okay running out there for another series, then put him out there for another series. What Like, why not at this point? Build the most compelling case you can build. It's your last opportunity on Saturday. So go make the most of it. Run it up. What did old boy from Mighty Ducks say? It's not worth winning if you can't win big. Run it up, man. Let's go. It'd be really fun to do it against the Aggies, too. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.